Explorettes, I'm Chelsea and you're watching my channel Chelsea Explores and today we are exploring Oceanside. So let's go. In this video, I'm going to cover all the fun things you can do on a weekend away in Oceanside. From where to stay, what to eat, the best beaches to visit, and all the fun activities, you can find it all right here. Together with Vista and Carlsbad, this city forms the Tri-City area. Let's first start with where Oceanside is located. This cute little town is located about 45 minutes north of the San Diego airport or about 80 miles south of Los Angeles. It is the most northern town in San Diego County and is best accessed by car or you can take a train to get here. Check out the regional coaster or the Amtrak as it does drop you off right in downtown Oceanside. A lot of the places mentioned in this video can be accessed via the downtown train station. So let's kick off your weekend in Oceanside by visiting the farmer's market. There are actually two different farmer's markets that both occur on Thursdays. One is in the morning from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and this is your traditional fruit and veggie stand kind of farmer's market. There is another farmer's market on Thursday nights from 5 to 9 p.m. and this is known as the Sunset Market. We're at the Oceanside Farmer's Market. This is the Sunset Market. We are here on a Thursday night. And mom is gonna get some food from the pad thai stand. Pad thai stand, what are you yeah. gonna order? Uh, chicken on mine. Pad thai? That's all they said. Oh, pad thai chicken. Or shrimp, but I'm eating chicken. True. And then I might get some vegan nachos or burrito. The vegan nacho sauce was delicious. All right, dad and I ended up getting burritos from Kalina's. These were the biggest burritos that we've ever seen. Delicious. Guys, I found vegan baklava. This is a rarity, if that's a word. You can never find this, and I'm so excited because this is a Hungarian dessert, and being Hungarian, obviously I had to get it. It's absolutely delicious. I would say the Sunset Market is more of a fair style market with tons of food places to eat and eclectic shops where you can buy little gifts. This had a young vibe to it, lots of high school and college kids there, or it's a great spot to walk around with your family. Pro tip, if you are having a hard time finding street parking, there is a parking garage right next to Parlor Donuts, which only costs $5. The next morning, I recommend that you get some breakfast and coffee. For breakfast, I recommend heading to the Piper Restaurant, which is located in the downstairs area of the Seabird Hotel. The Piper has garden Garden to table delicacies in a bright, convenial California coastal setting just off the beach. Stop by in the morning for breakfast and freshly pressed juice. I, of course, ordered my classic all American breakfast because you can never go wrong with that. I recommend getting your coffee at a different spot, and for this, I recommend walking over to Camp Coffee. Enjoy a nice little cup of joe, a vegan pastry, and some cute mountain vibes in this cute coffee shop. Now, as you will see in this video, we didn't get the most sunny of weekends. It was actually quite overcast. That is quite typical for Oceanside. The marine layer tends to roll in in the morning and does not burn off until the early afternoon. Temperatures on average range from high 60s to low 70s, with your occasional weekend in the mid 80s to 90s. Let's talk about the best beaches in Oceanside. There are actually six miles of beaches. The two main beaches would be the one by the Oceanside Pier and the one in the harbor. The main beach in Oceanside that people tend to go to would be the one by the pier. This beach specifically is easily accessible from the train station. This area is definitely more crowded than the harbor. It has a lot of fun things going on. Now the Oceanside Pier is the longest pier on the west coast sitting at 2,000 feet long. There used to be a restaurant at the end of this pier called Ruby's Diner, but unfortunately it has closed. Fun fact though, I actually applied to work here as a waitress in high school. I got the job, but instead chose to work at a local surf shop called Surf Ride. The pier is a great area to people watch, go fishing as you do not need a fishing license to fish here, or a great spot to watch a sunset from. Obviously, you can also walk along the pier and watch the surfers down below. Speaking of down below, there are a ton of fun activities down below the pier. You can rent a Surrey bike and ride along the beach here, or grab a frozen lemonade on a hot summer day, or even check out the amphitheater 
located right next to the pier where the movie Bring It On was actually filmed. In the summers, this amphitheater holds live concerts, movie nights, and it is the ending destination for the November turkey trot that occurs in Oceanside. Down by the pier here is actually this Junior Seau Community Center that has a gym, a basketball gym inside of it. And if you didn't know, he was such an iconic person to the Oceanside community and lived right down, or had a house at least, right down on the strip here in Oceanside, which I had visited one time and met him, which was pretty awesome but they named this community center after him after he passed away and then another fun fact is my mom actually used to watch my dad play basketball in this gym when they were younger but they still have open gym hours if you are looking to rent a place to stay here down at the beach in Oceanside there's a ton of cute places along both sides, the south and north, but if you're looking for a place that has a little bit less car traffic, I would recommend staying along the beach along the north side of the pier. South side, it just seems a little bit busier with cars and motorcycles. It's a little bit louder, whereas the north side definitely seems quieter and just less cars and a little more peaceful. And it's beautiful with all these palm trees here and a view of the pier in the background. Another popular location for you to stay at during your weekend away in Oceanside would be either a Mission Pacific Inn or the Seabird Resort. Both of these are newly constructed hotels located right along the beachfront area. The Mission Pacific Hotel is most known for its rooftop bar. However, if you plan to visit this, reservations are highly recommended, especially if you're visiting on a weekend or during the sunset hour. Right outside the Mission Pacific Hotel is the relocated Top Gun House. So we are here at the Top Gun House, which is right behind me. As you can see, there is fencing right now, but they have moved this into a location right in front of the Mission Pacific Hotel based on where it was when it was actually filmed. A fun fact is that this is gonna be made into like a little pastry shop, so when it is open and ready, you can actually head inside the Top Gun house and get some delicious food. And maybe they'll be playing the Top Gun movie in the background. We'll see. The Seabird Resort is a cute little hotel that offers the restaurant called The Piper and a bar that overlooks the ocean. The inside of the hotel has this cute nautical vibe. It has a rooftop pool, board game room, and a little gym. Moving further north, you will find the Oceanside Harbor Beach. The harbor is the most northern of beaches in Oceanside, and it is this quaint little harbor where you can rent boats from, go paddle boarding, or even go whale watching. So I am currently in Oceanside Harbor, and this is actually the location that you are able to launch your paddleboard or kayak. There is only one spot in the harbor that you can launch from. You will see a ramp with a sign that says Oceanside Kayak and Paddleboard Launch Pad. It is right in front of this Oceanside sign, so just walk down and launch your paddleboard or kayak. It's right where the seals are kind of always hanging out. If you are looking to do that, Oceanside Harbor is a great spot to paddleboard. You can paddleboard through all the boats and look at the amazing different boats. Now to get to this location, when you enter the harbor, you are gonna wanna turn right and not head towards the beach. So turn right and head down the street. There is tons of street parking down here that is free, so you can just park along the side of the road, bring your paddle board or kayak down to the boat dock and blow it up. Or, you know, if it's ready to go, then do that. One thing to note about paddle boarding by the seals is it does smell fishy and smells like seals, so just be warned. If you're looking for a paddle board recommendation, I personally have a paddle board called the Blue Fin Sup Stand Up Paddle Board. It is a blow up one, so you you do need to be feel a little sturdy while you're on it. It comes in a bag you can take with you and carry it as you go. It has the pump and everything. So if you are looking for that kind of a paddle board, stand up paddle board, then that's the one I recommend. There are two sides to the harbor, the beach side and the side where all the boats park. You can actually walk between the beach side and the boat side pretty easily. As you walk from the beach to the boats, along the way you will find a New England inspired village with a few restaurants that you can eat at or get a drink at. Head to the top of the little lighthouse for some oysters and drinks with a view. Don't forget to grab some ice cream or some souvenirs from the shops down below. What I love about the Harbor Beach compared to the beach near the pier is that it has wide open sand areas with no rocks or anything. It also seems to be a little less crowded 
and more family friendly oriented than the beaches right next to the Oceanside Pier. It's definitely calmer waters as well as it's between two different jetties and there's actually just a lot to do here. So you can do the paddle boarding, you can rent a duffy boat. There's actually camping here. You would bring your RV and camp in the parking lot down at the end of the harbor. There is an area with little picnic tables that you can, I believe, rent out. I'm not sure, it might be free. Um, and have a little party set up, like a kid's birthday party or a barbecue hangout. The harbor is also a popular surfing spot, which again, the Oceanside Pier is also a popular surfing spot, but two great spots to surf in Oceanside. I would say the harbor is more of a beginner's spot. There are some fire pits down at the very end of the harbor by the area that you would camp at. However, there are very few, so if you are looking to get one of those fire pits, you're gonna have to come pretty bright and early and set up your camping chairs ahead of time and kind of save that spot to have it for the sunset time. Okay, let's talk about fun activities besides the beaches. Biking is a popular activity in Oceanside. Like I said earlier, you can rent a Surrey bike and ride along the beach or rent an e-bike and take one of the many trails Oceanside has to offer. One of the most popular trails is the Nine Mile San Luis Rey River Bike Trail that starts in downtown Oceanside. Speaking of the San Luis Ray Mission. This is a bit further inland which you can bike to or also drive to. It was founded in 1798 and now runs as an active church and museum. You can take tours of this mission for free or a donation based approach. Every first Friday of the month you can head over to Artist Alley located in downtown Oceanside across from the Oceanside Library and cute little fountains to check out some local artists where they bring out their art for you to purchase and check out. Did you know that the city of Oceanside has over 30 murals that you can see throughout your weekend in Oceanside? There's actually a complete mural walk that you can do and I will make sure to link the map in the description box below. Now a cool new area that has developed in Oceanside is called the Tremont Collective. This is an inspired warehouse conversion located in the heart of coastal Oceanside, California. The Tremont Collective houses lifestyle retail shops, artistic offices, fitness places, events, and delicious eating and drinking establishments. Come here for a drink with your friends and don't forget to bring your dog as it is dog friendly. Lastly, if you're an adventure junkie like me, make sure to check out skydiving in Oceanside. I took my mom here for her 50th birthday and it took our breath away, literally. The best dining locations can pretty much be found either in the harbor or in downtown Oceanside off Mission Ave. I already recommended the Piper for breakfast and Camp Coffee for your coffee fix, but if you're looking for donuts, then I recommend checking out Parlor Donuts. For lunch, I recommend going to the greenhouse for a healthy salad or some vegan options. And for dinner, well, I'm gonna leave that one up to you as there are too many options to choose from. But if you're looking for a good wine bar, then Orfila has great wine, also great food, and even live music. Or head to that rooftop bar on the Mission Pacific Inn. As always, if you ever have any video recommendations or requests for me, please drop that in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help the YouTube algorithm. I hope you found this weekend guide to Oceanside helpful.